I know you lot from somewhere. Strippers! Are you still doing it? What do you think? Well, obviously, it all took us by surprise back in the day, and some of us naively thought it would just be a fleeting little film that would go to VHS and then you move on to the next project, whereas actually it's always been under the surface in my life ever since. So to, to, to bring it back to life with these people is you know, it's just a dream come true. We were a family at the end of the day and when we got together it was it's like when you're not seeing you, you know, your uncle for a little bit, you, know, you sort of it's you just fall straight back in, in into that relationship and uh, and to be able to add in these these young Monty's or baby Monty's, what what we the call babies. it, the young, babies, young young, young Monty's, young Monty's, young Monty's. <laughs> coming in, uh, you know they they they're just so incredible and so talented and just just fit in like they they've been here forever. It's been great having that catch up and that sort of life thing of having done something when we were all very young and now we're all older. That feels like very special and like a real privilege. And then we've got all of this wonderful energy that the um, new young cast are bringing and are full of, they're, they're delightful, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, joyous. Oh, I like it. Haven't seen that much of each other for a while. Maybe make up for lost time, eh? Thanks, Dad. I think Destiny and Gaz's relationship is really lovely. And I think the the way that they sort of communicate. I think it's quite funny because they're both quite bolshy characters and quite guarded, but they do have this kind of softness with each other. When all the chaos is like settled around them, they, they have this really nice softness and I think the writing and the dialogue between them is really beautiful. The relationship that he has with his son Nathan is kind of damaged, you know, probably through him being pretty much like an absentee father. Which is, if you know, if that's if, if Gaz has got a major fault, then that's what it is. Similarly, he's been kind of absentee father uh, with, with Destiny, um, but in this case, I mean, I think he probably knows. He still tries with Nathan. But I think he probably feels that that is that that ship has sailed. But he's trying his best to try and make up for lost time with, with, with Destiny. But you know, the way that Simon writes, you, you're never sort of down for too long. He still manages to make it you know, accurate and, uh, and, and light. It's about destiny. She's doing all right. Like you know. Somebody's got to look out for it. Who the hell are you to give out parenting advice, eh? You don't even have any kids. The whole industry has changed because we've now got all of the streaming services and um, there's been a real uptake of, you know, really pushing the envelope in terms of where you can take the television medium and what the UK um, television industry was really fantastic at in the 80s and 90s was making TV programmes which were sort of very specific to the UK um, and it feels like The Full Monty is in that tradition so it's in the tradition of people like Paul Abbott who wrote Clocking Off and um, Alan Bleasdale who wrote Boys from the Black Stuff um, so it's rooted in that really, um, what we're really good at here, which is a very strong literary tradition, whilst also being about a community in the UK that is totally recognisable to everybody, north or south. What about you? What are you proud of in your life? He ain't got two pennies to rub together, has he? I just hope for your sake you don't wake up one day and realise what you've missed. Do you suffer from anxiety? Probably will do now. Well, Simon Beaufoy uh, had, had been approached a few times to write a sequel to The Full Monty, another film, that, and he didn't feel that, uh, you know, there was a reason for doing that. He, it was not, uh, not something that he was interested in. But he said he found himself getting, getting angry at the fact that things have not improved for the, the, the kind of characters that uh, he wrote about 25 years ago. And given eight hours to tell the story of where these people are, where society is at this point, it kind of felt to him like we've come full circle. You know, the, the improvements that should have been made haven't. So it's, you know, and, and, and it's tr true in the UK, but kind of worldwide. I think, I think that's what surprised us back in 
1997 or whenever, whenever it was, that, that, that you know, that there was people on the other side of the world that were relating to this, and we were trying to fathom out what, what, what is it? You know, I, I remember talking to an American journalist at the time, and um, he was from um, a steel producing city, and he says, well, the same thing is happening with us over there, and I thought, of, yeah, of course it is. They connected with the characters last time. They'll know these characters. Hopefully they'll just pick it up from where they left off as well and, you know, recognise it. Meet Ant the Man, Sheffield's next big thing. You'll all be able to tell your grandkids you knew him before he was famous. And what does Sheffield's next big thing have to say for himself? Can I have a cup of tea, please? There's a lot of scenes that I love filming, but I did get to smash a car windscreen with a skateboard, which was really, really fun. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was really fun. And um, I remember they were saying, oh, don't worry, like it probably won't smash the first time. So like, if it doesn't smash, don't worry. And I was like, no, I'm gonna make it, make sure it smashes. And it did, and yeah, it was just really fun. Like you never get to do stuff. Well, I don't do stuff like that. In my life. <laughs> the cafe that I was set in for Lomper and Dennis's Big Bap's Cafe is, is a, a bit of a focal point, really, where a lot of the characters gather. Um, I, I just enjoyed doing doing the scenes in there. There's a there's a warmth to it, you know, a familiarity. It's like it's the community centre. Me and Bobby, and, and we had a, we had a, a, a nice little scene overlooking the balcony, and uh, I'm. You know, Nathan's there in his police uniform, and uh, this was an open shopping centre, you know, it was a, quite, a, quite a busy day, and we were trying mm. to sort of cordon off little areas to film in, and, uh, and, and I remember kind of just every time I was off camera, I'd have people coming up to me going like, oh, the, sorry, officer, couldn't, do you mind if we, if we just go through there and stuff? <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, sure. So I, I, was, I, was also, I was acting the police officer, but I was also a professional police officer that day. <laughs> I don't really like pigeons, it's kind of <laughs> creepy wee things. And I thought, I, I genuinely thought, and I mean, I, I read this, read the script, and, and during that scene, guys is covered in pigeons and he, he sort of shoes them off to try and catch one. And I thought, how are they, these pigeons are just going to fly into the Sheffield sky. There's no way that they're going to come back, but every t they just flew right into their wee coop. It was incredible to watch, the most, the best, trained on-set animal I've ever worked with, so I will not hear a bad word against pigeons <laughs> any longer. Who really cares about their future? What's out there for them? Go big or go home. This is going to be the greatest comeback. Game on! Get back here. Here's a crisp. I think because there are so many characters and so many varied characters, I feel like there's going to be someone for everyone to connect with or someone for everyone to look at and be like, oh, I know how that feels or, oh, yeah, I know someone like that. Um, and I think that's always kind of comforting to see on screen when you're watching something and that the, the realness of it is what hopefully will keep people engaged. <laughs>